Okay, adding and subtracting fractions. Adding and subtracting fractions. It's um, it's a process that's uh, fairly simple to follow. You just need to know what that process is and possibly understand why it's necessary. Let's start with a, uh, an example I think we can all understand. Uh, we'll talk about pizza again. Um, my friend Tom has a call for a pizza. And I eat a call for a pizza. How much pizza have we had all together? Well, of course, he's had a quarter and I've had a quarter. We've had two quarters between us, right? And some of you will say to yourself, well, two quarters, that's the same as one half. And you'd be right, because you can simplify that fraction, can't you? By dividing the numerator and the denominator by two. Simplifying fractions is something we'll talk about later. But that's an easy, that's an easy question. One quarter plus another quarter is two quarters. We all understand that. One banana and another banana is two bananas. One pizza plus another pizza is two pizzas. A cake plus a cake is two cakes. Um, here's another example. Two fifths of something plus one fifth of the same thing. What have I got altogether? I've got three fifths of it, haven't I? Not a problem. Tom and I again, we, uh, what does he have? He has four balloons. And I have five balloons. Uh, what have we got between us? We've got nine balloons, right? It's the same thing. Fractions, balloons, cakes, pizzas. It's the same thing. As long as you're um, adding two of the same thing, you can put them together to give yourself one number. Four balloons and five balloons is nine balloons. Two fifths and one fifth is three fifths. One quarter and another quarter is two quarters, which we could simplify to one half. It's very straightforward. But what about if I eat one quarter of our pizza and Tom has one fifth? What then? Well, this is when it gets a little bit trickier, isn't it? Because it's very hard to say what one quarter is plus one fifth. Um, we need to make our life a little bit easier by turning those two fractions into the same thing. And we do that in, 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 in terms of fractions by, by finding what we call a common denominator. Which, which part of the fraction is the denominator? Well, if you remember anything about fractions, you remember it's the bottom part. The bottom part of a fraction is called the denominator, not the denominator, no, the denominator. And the top part is called the numerator. There it is. Okay, so we have two parts in our fraction, the numerator and the denominator. And what we need to do in order to be able to add fractions is we need to turn our fractions into equivalent fractions that have a common denominator. That means fractions that have the same denominator. Well, that means we look at our two denominators, in this case 4 and 5, and we say to ourselves, can we think of a number that's a multiple of 4 and a multiple of 5. A number in the 4 times table and a number in the 5 times table. Well, the easiest way to do that, a way that will always, always work, uh, no matter how short of ideas you are, is to multiply the two numbers together. If I do 4 times 5, I'm finding a number that's in the 5 times table, aren't I? And if I do 5 times 4, which is the same thing, then I'm finding a number in the 4 times table. Let's multiply those two numbers together, and 5 fours are 20. So I reckon we can turn both these fractions into equivalent fractions that have a denominator of 20. Let's clear a bit of space here by getting rid of these titles, these tags. There we go. Let's get rid of that as well. If we can. Okay. Pretty scruffy. Let's just rewrite the whole thing. There we go. That was one quarter. And that was one fifth. There we go. So, equivalent fractions. We're turning 4 into 20. How do we turn 4 into 20? by times in by 5. Well done. And the rule with equivalent fractions is whatever you do to the denominator, you do the same thing to the numerator. So we're going to multiply that numerator 1 by 5. And 1 times 5 is 5 by right. And over here on the right hand side, what have we done to 5 to make 20? 3 times by 4. Whatever we do to the bottom, we do to the top. So we times that by 4. 1 times 4 is 4. So we have two equivalent fractions that now have the same denominator. One quarter is equivalent to five twentieths, and one fifth is equivalent to four twentieths, could be times the top and bottom there by four. Now we have two fractions with the same denominator, and we can do what we did earlier. We can just simply add the numerators together, not the denominators, like we did there, two fifths 
and one fifth is three fifths. Same thing here, five twentieths plus four twentieths, well, five out of four is nine. The denominator doesn't change, and our answer is nine twentieths. We should always say to ourselves at the end, when you've got an answer that's a fraction, can I simplify my fraction? Uh, and the answer here, of course, with 9 and 20 is that no, we can't, because 9 and 20 don't have any common factors apart from 1, uh, and therefore we can't make that fraction any smaller in terms of its numerator and denominator. So we've done 1 fifth plus 1 fourth, 1 quarter plus 1 fifth equals 9 twentieths. So let's just do another example to highlight um, how this works. Okay, let's say this time 2 sixths plus... Uh, uh, three fifths. How about that? Two sixths plus three fifths. Different denominators. We can't add them as they are. We need to find a common denominator. We need to find a common multiple of six and five. Who can think of one? Well, if in doubt, multiply the numbers together. Six times five is thirty. So we will use a common denominator of thirty here. Six times by five was thirty. So we do the same thing to our numerator. Two times five is ten. And over here, 5 times what is 30? 5 times 6 is 30. So we'll times our numerator by 6 as well. 3 times 6 is 18. Well done. Of course, 2 6 is a bad example of a, a fraction of you, but there we go. Um, 10 thirtieths plus 18 thirtieths. The denominator doesn't change. What's 10 plus 18? It's 28. Ask ourselves the question we should always ask when we get a fraction answer. Can I simplify my fraction? Look at 28 over 30 and say, can I simplify? Is there a common factor of 28 and 30? And the answer is yes, there is, because they're both even numbers. So I know that I can divide them both by 2. I can half them both. Half of 28 is 14. Half of 30 is 15. And there we go. Our final answer is 14 fiftieths. 14 fifteenths, I should say. 14 fifteenths. Let's do another one. I was saying it was a bad example, because of course 2 six I should have written as one third. That's a... Actually, I should have simplified in the first place. But, but anyway, here's another one. Uh, one quarter plus three eighths. So here we go. I need a common multiple of four and eight. We could multiply four by eight, couldn't we, to make 32 and use that as our common denominator. Maybe I'll do that in a minute. But right now, I'm going to point out the fact that actually they have a smaller common multiple than that. And you might have seen it already. Uh, in fact, there are a couple of smaller ones. But I'm going to go with 8, because of course 8 is a multiple of 8, and it's also a multiple of 4. And just the smaller the denominator that you use, um, the easier your life is. Clearly 3 8 hasn't changed, so I'm going to keep that the same. And what have I done to 4 to make 8? I've doubled it, I'll times by 2, so I'll do the same thing to my numerator here. 1 times 2 is 2, and there we go. 1 quarter is equivalent to 2 8. 2 8 plus 3 8, well 2 plus 3 is 5. How many eighths have I got all together? I've got five eighths. Can I simplify my answer? No, I can't. Uh, just to show you what happens if you if you um, don't choose the lowest possible common denominator, let's go with our 32 that I talked about. Let's do four times eight to make our common denominator 32. We've got 32 here and 32. How many fours make 32? Eight fours make 32. Times one by eight. Which means 8, and how many 8s make 32? 8 times 4 is 32. So 3 times 4 is 12. 8 plus 12 is 20, so that makes 20 over 32 altogether. Can I simplify my answer? Yes, I can. They're both even numbers, aren't they? I can definitely halve them. Is there anything I can, uh, anything bigger than that I can divide them both by? Well, I, I don't know about you, but I, I have done my 4 times table a bit, and so I can see that I could divide 20 and 32 by 4. How many 4s make 20? 5 fours. How many 4s make 32? 8 fours. 5 eighths. There we go. You get the same answer. So if you don't find the lowest common denominator um, for your fractions, it's not the end of the world, as long as you make sure that you simplify your answer uh, wherever possible. And you keep going until it's fully simplified. I could have halved these numbers, couldn't I? Get to 10 over 16. If I'd done that, I'd have had to recognise that I could halve again to get my 5 eighths. So that I'm pretty simplified. All right. Is it any different for subtracting? Well, no, it's not. In fact, let's do some examples. Uh, I have five sixths of a cake left. My friend Tom, I give three sixths. No, I don't. I give him one sixth. Let's say, if I have five sixths of the cake, I give one sixth to Tom. What have I got left? That's right. I've got four sixths left. 
because 5 minus 1 is 4, isn't it? I could simplify 4 to 6 and say 2 thirds, if I wanted to be clever. Um, but the principle is the same with subtracting fractions as it is with adding fractions. Um, as long as your denominator is the same, you simply subtract the numerators and simplify your answer, and Bob's your uncle. Um, but, again, the same problem arises. If I have 5 sixths of the cake, and I give a quarter to Tom, it's harder to say exactly how much is left, isn't it? Because 5 sixths minus 1 quarter is trickier. Um, so we need, again, to find a common denominator. Um, 6 times 4 is 24, so I could multiply them together. Um, smart kids will have noticed that actually uh, I could use 12 as a common denominator here because 12 is a multiple of 6 and 12 is a multiple of 4. Um, how many 6s make 12? Two 6s. So what if we do to the denominator? We do the same to the numerator. 5 times 2 is 10. And how many 4s make 12? 4 times 3. So we do the same to the numerator. 1 times 3 is 3. And we have 10 12s minus 3 12s. 10 minus 3 is 7. To my answer, how much cake will I have left? The answer is I will have seven twelfths of my cake left. How about if I'd uh, found a bigger common denominator, say 24? Well, let's just work it through just to show it to you. It doesn't make it, um, a huge difference. Uh, six times four is 24, so five times four will be 20, and four times six is 24, so one times six is six. 20 minus 6 is 14, 14 over 24 can be simplified because they're both even numbers, half them both gives me 7 over 12 and that was the answer I got over here as well. Not a problem again if you use a higher common denominator as long as you make sure that you simplify your answer. Adding and subtracting fractions, number 1, you need a common denominator. Very simple process. Find your common denominator, and that requires you to use your knowledge of equivalent fractions, which I know you've all got because you're all very clever boys and girls. And uh, number two, you either add or subtract, depending on what the question is asking you to do. Your numerators. Remember, the denominator remains unchanged. And number three, ask yourself the question once you've got an answer. Can I simplify my answer? That's how you add and subtract fractions. It's a simple process. As long as you don't get confused and muddled with other processes, you should be in business.